What remains now is to set up the health bar for our enemy. So let's create a new scene. Plus, and let's create a node 2D. This will be our container for our health bar. Now in our health bar, we're gonna use a couple of images. So we're gonna right click our health bar, add a sprite. This will be the health bar overlay. So I'm gonna add that. I'm gonna rename this to overlay. I'm gonna load the texture which we added in a previous video, which is found inside assets. However, I don't want this to remain in assets. I'm gonna create a new folder inside entities. So let's go to our project folder here. I'm gonna cut this. I'm gonna create a new folder inside entities. I'm gonna name this health bar. Inside here, I'm gonna create another folder called assets. I'm gonna paste it in there. Okay. So let's let our overlay once again. Let us load the texture. Let's navigate to health bar, assets, and select this one. We now are gonna need to add the health bar itself, which would which is the bar that's going to move depending on your health. So I'm gonna add a shell node and add a texture frame. I'm gonna rename this to health. And on this, I'm gonna load the pixel image which we have in our assets folder. Select that. Now, as you can see, it's uh, it's not big enough for our purpose. So let's make sure to hit expand. Let's move this so it fits on top of everything. Perfect. Let's change the color to red. And let's make sure this is behind the overlay. And in order to move it on top of it, it's just to right click this and select move up. Or simply hold control and press up. Well, this is starting to look good. However, if you lose health now, this is going to be transparent. So we're going to add a background using the same node. I'm just going to select it and press Ctrl and D to duplicate this. And I'm going to rename health 1 to background. Then I'm going to press left Ctrl and the up arrow to move it behind the red health again. Now for the background, I'm just going to change the color a little bit. So I'm going to use a dark blueish. That should be fine. So let's take a look here. If the health were to decrease now, we're going to have a blueish background. But it's a bit too blue, so let's change the color a little bit here. There we go, that looks better. A little better. It's up to you what color you choose to use, of course. Let's increase the health to maximum here. So the way this is going to work is, we are going to scale the, the health node itself. So when we have 50%, the scale is going to be 0.5, giving us 50%. So let's save this. Let's add this into Entities, Health Bar, and create it right there. But we are not done. We need a label so we can actually see the health. And optionally, you may want to turn that off so you don't see the health percentage and only the red bar. So on our Health Bar, I'm going to add a label. Selecting that. Let's enter 100%. Let us load a, a font by creating a new dynamic font. Select it again, press Edit. Scroll up and load the font into here. And select Maurice Roman. There we go. Now it's a bit too small. So let's increase the size to 32. Let's move it up. Actually, let's not move it yet. First, we have to change the alignment so it's centered. So select the label, just change the align to center and the vertical align to center as well. So whenever the value change, it should still be centered. Perfect. Okay, this looks good. Let's rename this to health text. Control S to save, and let's create the script for a health bar. Right click health bar and attach a new script. This is fine, hit create. And let us begin by deciding whether or not we want to use the health text. Export boolean var display health label. And by default, we may want that. And on ready, we want to get the health text, which will be get node health text. Actually, let me change label to text here. There we go. What else do we need? Well, in order to calculate the length, of, or rather the scale of our health bar, I will need to know the maximum value and the current value of our health. So inside the script again, I'm going to get the health values. So the first value I need is the max value. And then we need the current value. We will also need a reference to our health bar itself. So on ready var health equals get node, and in here we will get health. When we start this, first of all, we want to decide whether or not we want to use this, and this of course depends whether or not we enable it inside the editor right here. By default, it's currently true. So if I, I turn this to false, basically in ready, if it is false, we want to turn it off. We may want to do health text.hide. So our ready is more or less done, but we will need to send this data to our health bar when we create it in the enemy here. So we're gonna create a funk 
initiate function here. And the first value we're gonna take will be the, the max value. And then we need the current value. So self max value equals max value. Self current value equals to clamp, I'm gonna add current value in there, from zero to max value. Because regardless of current value, we'll never ever want this to exceed max value. And we never ever want this to become less than zero. And after this, we'll, of course, we'll have to update the health bar. So I'm gonna create a new method called update. Copy that, let's go down and let's create that function. So we have func update. And in here, we are going to get the percentage of our percentage equals our current value divided by max value. And this will give us a value between 0 and 1. So 1 in this case would be 100%. So if current value is top value, 1 divided by 1 would be, or 100 divided by 100 would be 1. If it's half the value of max value, it's going to be 0.5. So 50%. Then we want to update the health bar scale. So we have health.set scale. Inside here we need a vector 2. The first value will be percentage. And the second 1. And lastly, we'll have to update the label. So var percentage text, because we now need a string of this. We're gonna calculate percentage multiplied by 100. And lastly, we're gonna add a percentage symbol here. Now here's the key. If you have a weird value uh, in your percentage, like 46.999 or something like that, the percentage text is currently going to display 46.999. It's, it's going to be too long and you probably don't want that. So, in order to remedy that, as we set the new value of our health text.set text, we are going to use percentage text dot pad decimals to zero. So basically, we are not going to have any decimals because we're padding it to zero. Now the last thing we need, we are going to need a function that allows us to set the health from outside. So, so between I'm going to create a function set health, and that's going to take in a value. However, as we set this value, current value, we're going to make sure it's clamped. So it will never become less than zero and never exceed max value. And after doing this, we will of course have to update. Otherwise, we won't be upgrade, updating the health bar scale, or, and we won't be updating the text of our health. Now, the one thing we haven't done is, if you decided to change the max value, we'll need to create a separate method for that, such as set max value. But that's all up to you, just something to keep in mind. So, set current health value. We are now done with this. So let's take a look at the health bar here now. Now, it is kind of big right now, so if I were to add it to our enemy, select a little icon here, let's navigate to health bar. And let's select the health bar. Now the health bar is kind of huge, and you may want that, or <laughs> and you may not want that. Regardless, I'm gonna show you how to reduce the size. So select the health bar after adding this as an instance. I'm just gonna scale it down a bit. So 0 0.4, 0 0.4, and done. There's no need to do anything else. You can of course change it directly inside here in the health bar if you want, but I'm not gonna do that because perhaps you have huge enemies, and scaling it up is usually worse than scaling it down. But we're not done yet. The health bar doesn't know anything. We need to initialize this health bar from within the enemy. So, selecting the enemy script, I'm gonna get the reference to our health bar. So, on ready var health bar equal get node health bar. I'm gonna copy that, comment a little bit. So, when do we want our health bar to do something? Well, when we start, we wanted to update it with this value. So, health bar dot init the maximum value, which in our case is max health and then just health. So what else? Well, when we change our health value, we want to inform health bar that we have changed value. So we can just do it here. So after you take damage, I'm gonna set health to health. So if it if health becomes less than zero, the health bar is gonna return to zero, and then we're gonna do everything else. We should be done now. So let's try it out. Let's go to the main scene here, and let's try to shoot our enemy. Whoa, that's a bit too much. And the reason it turned directly to zero is because we are not doing float math, we are doing integer math. So 0 0.5 would be a zero. So let's fix that immediately. Now this is a problem that is actually very common. So right here, when we initialize it, I'm just gonna multiply it with 1.0. It's the same with current value. 1.0. So now everything should work, because this is now stored as floats. Let's try it again. And here we go. Perfect. As you can see. Yeah, well, we are done now. 
If you enjoyed it, hit the like button. If you want to see more videos, you're more than welcome to subscribe. And I hope to see you in a future video. Bye-bye.